It's time to step into the Coming Out Lounge, a cool, safe space to be true to your sexual self. With your host, Rick Clemens. Rick has helped hundreds of people come out of the closet, and now each week he's bringing you cool insights for loving and accepting yourself, boosting your self-confidence, and living a guilt-free, purpose-filled life on the other side of the closet doors. Cuddle up with yourself and get ready for heartwarming coming out stories, ideas for living authentically, and tips for being fully self-expressed. Now here's your host, Coming Out Coach Rick. Hello, 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 Closet Busters. Guess what time it is? Yep, it's time once again to stop your closet dwelling, to step out, step up, and step in to living your truth. Yay! Yay! And as you can tell, I have a very wonderful (laughs) guest already. He's already piping in. But, you know, here's the thing that I love already about this show is, you know, what if your truth meant that there were lots and lots and lots of questions people we're having about you or what if oh, they were, gosh. Yeah, it's, it happens all the time, right, Jeffrey? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, and we're not just talking about questions about, okay, are they gay? Are they lesbian? Are they bisexual? We're not talking about that. We're talking about the questions about, oh my gosh, what is this queer thing? What do they mean queer? But what yeah. the heck does that actually mean? So yes. I know, Jeffrey, my guest knows that it used to be kind of a derogatory statement. It kind of like fairies and dykes and light in the Indeed. pants and fags, all that stuff. Indeed. Well, I think there is that sort of, Rick, should I just go? Go. Do you want me to where say who going? I am? Or? Yes, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Right? I love how we're diving into this because <laughs> Why this is what I love. to me? I'm just a random. Yeah, I'm just, I want this random person who's just like diving in to dive in. But before he does... I want to tell you a little bit, just a little bit about him, because as soon as I saw him and met him and... and Wait, 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 wait. pause right there. As soon as I saw them and met them, (gasps) this is the... Oh, we're already here. I'm we're so already, happy. we're living it. We are living it. And that's so exactly, <laughs> it is. And that's exactly why I just did what I did, because I knew that Jeffrey would correct me in that way. Because you <laughs> see, as a queer man myself, okay, and I'm going to say that, and then we're going to start to dissect that. But as yes. a queer man myself, yes. I have had to step into this other way of being around lots of my queer friends, because some of my queer friends are he and him's and others are she and hers and other of them are them and they's and we're going to dissect this today because you see i want all of you all of you listening to start understanding what it means to be queer in 2016 and beyond yes that's my little (laughs) buzz lightyear moment right there we go and to really help me deconstruct this is this really really beautiful being He's a Vine superstar. They are, they are a Vine superstar. You know he is a Vine. They are a star. It does. We- <laughs> and a we. I mean, I think this is the thing we've got to get used to is we are, they are, all of these things. But they are an LGB advocate, an MTV and logo red carpet correspondence. I mean, is there anything you are? I'm an author, about? too. And just author, like that's you. right. Just I know. And it's just around the corner for you, just like it is for me. I know. So, so I want to bring him on. You've been hearing them, they, he, there all these different things speak to you already. Welcome, Jeffrey Marsh, to the Coming Out Lounge. Thank you so much. And I this is only my projection, but I sense a little bit of awkwardness mm-hmm. in the use of pronouns. Yes. Is it true? Yeah. Yes. Which is not a problem at all. No, and it's so interesting because I'm kind of purposely doing it because I remember when I first had to start getting used to this. Sure. I was at a conference in Atlanta. It was the Creating Change Conference. And here I am, this like, you know, 40, late 40 something guy strolling in going, I'm the coming out coach. I kind of got it all going on. I know how to do this. And suddenly, oh my God, I didn't know what to do with this because I had to re engineer my thinking and I had to start being very embracing. Yes. And that's really what it's all about, isn't it? It is. I love that conference, by the way. Yes, it's a really good conference. I wonder if we were there at the same time. It's possible. There was a scandal this year about Israel well, and about, yes. you saw all that. Yeah. yeah, I saw all that too. But so there let's kind of dive drama. into your world and how yes, back you... Yes, track. Well, no, we're, we're not really off track because this is all part of it. Yes. We have to kind of do the pronoun usage and from yes. whence we came in order to get to this place because... Not everything is black and white and rainbows and unicorns. It's all very, very different. 
in the spectrum yes. of sex, sexuality, gender, and gender identity. Yes, there is an organization. I'm going to start by totally nerding out. I hope that's okay. You nerd as much as you want to. Okay. There's an organization called the American Dialect Society. And for 2015, they chose, I mean, this is the top, I don't think they would mind me saying they are the top nerds of American dialect, the American dialect of English. That sounds like a pretty cool, it's almost like a, like getting an Oscar, it would seem like, you know? I think so. <laughs> they chose as their word of the year for 2015, the singular use of they as a pronoun. Mm, how interesting. And how, specifically how it's used by genderqueer people. People. Okay, so I'm going to stop you right there because I think this is where we've got to start really yes. deconstructing. So yeah. explain genderqueer to our audience. <laughs> that is so in, awesome. in one minute or less, explain it, girl. <laughs> genderqueer is, well, I'll get personal. I have identified as many things mm -hmm. throughout the years. And if you go back, even if you just do a Google search on me, you'll see articles where I'm using the pronoun he mm -hmm. and him. You'll see it. And you'll see this evolution getting toward gender queer. And here's the fun part. Warning, I may evolve to something else at some point. <laughs> Gender well, queer may not be the end of the road. Well, I think we all evolve. And that's what I think is so interesting is when people get all yeah. hung up in this stuff. Yes. It's like, well, okay, we're just evolving. Yes. I may have been a father, but now I'm a dad. I mean, come on. It's just, yeah. it's <laughs> kind of like, okay. And then in some worlds, in Every some circles, I'm a daddy. And then in other circles, yes. I'm a daddy bear. So, you know. It's just how we flow. But back to the gender queer. I love that you said you have been a he, a him, yeah. a they, a them. And, you know, it, to a certain extent, that is still part of who I am. Of course it is. That's the thing that I have come to realize. And, well, we need to talk about young people and their labels. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get to that. But gender queer is the closest thing I could find to not really being specific about my identity. Queer was the word I could find that was the most umbrella, the most inclusive, the most kind of wishy-washy, non-specific, which is how gender identity feels to me. Mm -hmm. But, I'm but what? That, well, I'm just kind of letting that hang there for a minute because I already can see the question marks above people's heads right now going, yes, but, I love that. but what about your sexual orientation? Folks, it's two totally different things here. <laughs> and a separate thing, actually. It is. Yes. Another separate thing is your physical makeup, mm -hmm. your genitalia, to put it bluntly. We can put it bluntly on this podcast, so we're okay I to go there. I somehow got that impression. Yeah. yeah. And all these I things. I mean, I personally like talking about my penis, so. I mean, <laughs> I'm the host of the show, so if <laughs> I want to talk about my penis, I will talk about my penis. <laughs> Would you like to talk about your penis? No, I, I would like you to talk about yours like and your life and penis? how that infects your queer. And no, because I think I'm so glad we're having so much fun with this because this doesn't have to be an uptight conversation. This does not have to be something that oh, causes God. people to hate. This doesn't have to be something yeah. that needs to cause. OK, well, we're going to go there. Doesn't need to cause young people to be bullied. This just needs to be a beautiful part of. Oh, OK. That's you. That's not me. But that's okay. Yes. Well, I'm a Zen Buddhist to go in yet another direction Yeah. for this interview. I'm a Zen Buddhist. And so to me, the concept of identity is very impermanent. It's very morphic. It's very, it's very open. And in a sense, we all contain all of the possibilities. That's a big statement. I know. <laughs> but I love that because, you know, and, you know, as you said that, Jeffrey, here's yeah. something that kind of went through my mind. And it, I don't know why it took me right into a session with a client, but it did. Yeah. I remember this client saying, so how do I be gay? And I said, mm. you don't. You just be you. Oh, my gosh. Do you think, Rick, that we're writing the same book? Mine's from a different angle and yours is from a different angle, but yeah. we're kind of getting to the same place. Well, of course, because it is all the same place. The thing is, is. Mm. This piece of just, we are, and, and I've studied some Buddhism. I, I call myself kind of a Buddhist. I'm not over-practicing sure. it, but there's pieces of me that are Buddhist at my core. 
And yeah. that's the thing. At my core, I know there's nothing permanent about me whatsoever. I will be something else 30 minutes from now when you and I are done recording this podcast. And then 30 minutes from then, I will be... We're always moving, just morphing energetic beings. That's what we yes. are. Yes. And I happen to know that you talk about your other personas that you have. Okay. So you're we're, we're, we're not bringing her up because if we let her, <laughs> if we let her out, honey, there won't be any room for the two of us on this show. I'm telling you, I have a pretty big. Uh, I can get I can get some pretty big energy. I think I could compete, but I'm we don't sure have to we make it about that. Yeah. But you understand the sort of morphic nature of it, the in and out and up and. I think part of self acceptance is being able to ride that wave of energy. And if I could get for, gosh, we're going all over the universe, but that's where we belong. That's right. Bring up another thing. That's what makes a good relationship to me, too, yes. is a partner who can go with you mm -hmm. as you morph. They can morph into whatever the complementary role is, and they can ride with you, and you can ride with them. And somebody who's not constantly requesting that you stay exactly the same. That, to me, is a good relationship. And I'm glad that came up in the way that it did, because many of the listeners... Not only are they struggling with their coming out process, whether it's gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, yep. whatever it is, that's just one piece of the puzzle. And then they'll try to go, okay, so now how do I do this having someone in my life as a relationship, as an intimate part, as a lover, as a sex, you know, you know, sexual being with me. And that piece that you said about them being able to morph with you is very important because I think sometimes all of us in our own ways feel like if the person's not morphing with us, then they need to do it the way we want it done. And mm. suddenly we lose the let's morph together and no, instead you become my piece of property that you need to do it this way. And I see this happen a lot and I see it. Quite oh, honestly, God. happen a yes. lot in the world that I tend to work in more so than others, which is older adults coming out. Sure. It becomes so, I hate to say settled, but that's probably a fairly fair word to use. They've become settled in how relationships are, especially if they've been married mm -hmm. and been in a lengthy relationship. Then suddenly when they do come out, they want to experience this other part of themselves that they never got to experience, so to speak, which is that adolescent gay youth <laughs> that acts like a real child yes. at times. And then they wonder why they can't make things work in relationships because the people they're trying to bring into their relationship oftentimes have already been out living their other life, their gay life, their lesbian life, their mm -hmm. queer life. And now they're suddenly past the they're kind of past the adolescence. Yeah. And so then they really struggle with this. And so... I think that piece you brought up about really being in that morphic nature is critical, critical for both sides of the fence that yes, you're going to need to morph and understand, okay, my partner or prospective partner or whomever, maybe a few steps ahead of you, but invite them to also step back with you and go, I'm not quite there with you. So can you kind of morph with me back down a little bit? And I don't mean mm -hmm. back down in a bad way. I mean, can you kind of back up with me and help me kind of come through this? I think it's just, yes. it can be a really beautiful experience. So, yes. so let's kind of talk about that. I, that wait, 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 I have more okay, to go. say. Oh, you were going to stay on that subject? Yeah. I was going to say, let's kind of go stay right there and continue on because I think we're dancing in a beautiful Zen pool right now. We're kind of like, yes, we are. let's beautiful. not move that space too quickly. So the floor well, is now yours. Well, the pool is now yours. I knew that I was queer in kindergarten. I knew that something was up. And many, many times, how do I say this politely? Interviewers who are less experienced than you are, Rick, will ask me, when did you discover you were different? And that is the wrong question. I don't really believe in wrong. But in this case, it's not a direction we want to go with that inquiry. No. Because what I discovered was that people had an adverse reaction to who I am, naturally. Mm-hmm. That was a discovery. I never discovered that I was different. I mean, I, it never felt like I was different. I was just a human being. You want to know what my question usually is? What? So, Jeffrey, when did you discover you were unique? Uh, at birth. Mm. 
Am I allowed to say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, because I think this is the thing, and it's interesting because, okay, so I think most listeners know we record these shows in advance, but ironically, tomorrow I'm going to be on a podcast, somebody else's yeah. podcast, called Parent Nation, and I'm actually talking about how we instill this loving embrace of being unique in our children. Yes. Yes. And what you reminded me of, everyone is unique, which makes us all exactly the same. Now, see, I thought you were going to say, you really remind me of that big, hot, hunky bear I saw on Bear Magazine cover the other day. Now you just... <laughs> all, all my faith in you just went out the door. But that that's too. okay. Okay, good. That okay, too. You, you just redeemed yourself. But you're right. This, <laughs> this embracing ourselves at birth... I know some people are going to go, well, how the heck do I do that? Well, you already are. Well, here's the other thing. When I make a Vine, when I put out a YouTube, when I write a book, I'm trying to, and to me, this feels very literal. I'm not exactly talking about a metaphor here. What I'm doing is creating content for my 11-year-old self, for me. If I could go back in time and talk to 11-year-old Jeffrey, which was the year that I first told my mom, if I could talk to 11-year-old Jeffrey and tell them, you're unique, you're wonderful, you're perfect, as you are. But I'm actually doing that process today. I mean, I get emails all the time that what I'm doing brings healing to people. But it also brings healing to me, to my life. But and I think that's what a lot of people yeah. don't grasp completely, that those of us, and I'm going to say this, and I'm not coming from an egoic space, folks. But those, those of us, us who do famous. this work. Famous. Is that what you're about to say? Well, no. I mean, I'm going to throw somebody famous in the midst of this conversation. Okay. I personally, I don't know her. I would love to, but I don't know her personally. But Oprah does this work mm -hmm. because she's healing herself every moment of every day to be a better Oprah for Oprah. Hmm. You know my favorite Oprah quote? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me, aren't you? I am. I love bread. Mm. She's so honest about who she is. Yes. And she's so upfront about the things she likes and the things she dislikes and how she feels about things. And it's just all on the surface. And I think people are really magnetized. But when we put That's our stuff out on the surface... We can magnetize people. We can bring people to us. Yes, we can also turn people yes. away from us. But when we do this honest, raw, unique, authentic piece of ourselves and allow it to just be, then there's no hiding. Hmm. There's no shame. There's no guilt. Because you can't be yes. shameful, hiding, and guilt if you're fully out and present. Did you ever notice how shame wants to spill out onto everybody else? Of course. When I exercise my own shame, I stop trying to shame other people. And it is so important to go through a telling the truth, a coming out process, to route out your own shame first, mm -hmm. and then start talking to other people, I find. I don't know if you would agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. shame, well, shame is an energy, just like lots of things are energy. But to me, shame is an energy. And as soon as you yes. release that shame, then it's free to go be something else. So I wanted never, ever, I realized when I started the process of coming out yet again, <laughs> I've come out several times as several different things, mm -hmm. but coming out yet again as genderqueer and asking people to use they and them as my pronouns, I realized that that is the content of what I want to communicate, but I also need to consider how I want to communicate that. And I decided that no matter what, I would never try to shame somebody else about it, try to guilt them, try to make them feel bad for using the quote unquote wrong words in relationship to me. None of that. Way back in the beginning of our conversation, you touched on that. Mm -hmm. This can be fun. Well, it can be fun and it can be a tongue twister because <laughs> all we have been conditioned to say is he and him and her. That's all we know. Yes. Now, yes. yes, we know how to say they and them when it applies to a group. But, and you know, I remember this. And again, it was right after my first, well, I've only been to one creating change. But right after that, I started speaking on panels for PFLAG. 
And on the panels, it's always, and those who listen to this on a regular basis, you kind of heard this before, there's always a gay man, a lesbian woman, which I don't know why I qualify it that way, but okay. So a gay, a lesbian, <laughs> a transgender, a bisexual. And I had the hardest time, even though one of my best friends now is transgender, mm -hmm. I had the hardest time wrapping my tongue around her him mm -hmm. because this beautiful person who is the woman she's always been has very dominant masculine features that mm -hmm. my brain had to deconstruct and unravel yes. to where now I can say, oh, this is my girlfriend, Michelle. Yes. The same it's, thing will happen yeah. as people start and as when people get to the show page and they see who you are and as they're already probably sitting there at computers looking up, okay, who's this Jeffrey Marsh buying star, blah, blah, blah. They're going to come across some images of you. I have facial hair. <laughs> and have beautiful face at that, I must say. <laughs> Thank you. I have eyeshadow. Gonna, I have a facial yes, hair. Facial hair, eyeshadow, sometimes wigs, sometimes not. Beautiful blue eyes, by the way. Just such a beautiful persona when you see them perform on their vines that it takes your own brain starting to deconstruct. And so don't feel bad if you're f***ing up when you're doing this because it's that, your brain. Yeah. Your brain is working to go, okay, I have to wrap my head around how to do this. It's like learning to ride a bike without training wheels. Your brain says, don't take the wheels off. Don't take the wheels off because I will be hurt. Yes. Well, if it's any consolation to anybody listening, I had to retrain myself. I'm sure you did. They and them was appropriate. And that doesn't mean that I didn't slip up mm -hmm. and use things that ended up ultimately not feeling appropriate for and me. And I don't know if anybody's caught this, but there's been a couple of times I've slipped in the girl. <laughs> but, with se several R's. Yes, with like a whole lot of R's. Depends <laughs> on how much I've been drinking. Luckily, I'm just drinking water right now. But um, I can make that girl go for a long time because I was good. harshly raised in the South, girl. So, you know, we know how to do that. Arr, good, good long time. But I think it's interesting when you finally embrace that you Indeed. get to learn. Without shame. Yes. Learn about yourself and about others without shame. Yes. And that is what I do. I get messages constantly, emails almost every single day saying I was going to commit suicide. I'm bullied at school. I've decided to stick around because of what you're doing, mm -hmm. because you have the courage to live without shame. And I cannot tell you how, maybe I don't have to tell you, obviously, Rick, you're doing the same thing, but it, it's so wonderful. It helps you get up in the morning. It helps mm -hmm. you stay focused. It helps you try that next thing. It helps you keep the energy going. Well, it is similar and it's generational. The work I Oh, we have to talk about that. We will. You know, what's interesting is... We only have five minutes left, Rick. We'll, we'll, we'll... We got a cutoff. No, we don't have to cut off. We can, we can okay. keep going. It's my damn show. I'll do what I want. <laughs> so, okay. but, but what's interesting is the shame that shows up in the... And actually, I'm getting ready to write an article about this. The yeah. baby boomer coming out is a huge, just mind f in and of itself. Because... The societal Samsonite they're carrying comes from a deep, deep, deep space of we don't talk about this at all, which In is a deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, those of us that are 40s and 50s and, you know, not so much the late 30s. I see it a little bit in the late 30 people. But man, it's deep seated stuff. Now, I'm not Let discounting it, what. Wait, we'll this, pause for a second. Yeah. Let alone the sort of way that our society and culture discards older people well, in general. Absolutely. But go ahead. I just had to throw no, that no, in. I'm glad you did throw that in because you know what? It, and I will be real honest. The hardest, not because it was hard work, but the hardest, most painful experience I had was working with someone who was 70 years old mm. and just coming out, mm. waited until 
and this is going to sound wrong, but waited until his wife had passed away. Sure. And decided he was going to be himself her way. Now, I hope everybody heard what I just said. He decided mm. he was going to be himself her way. 70 years old to step into her truth. Hmm. There's a whole lot of societal stuff hung up in that 70 year old psyche. Yes. I mean, it reminds me of transparent, yes. of course. Thank of course. goodness they're telling that story. Yes. Yeah. But that doesn't diminish that there's a different kind of battle, I believe, that's going on now because the youth are becoming the gender queer nation. Yes. Good segue, Rick. And they're taking and bearing the flag. And my own daughters, and this is probably why I was able to do that segue fairly well, mm -hmm. were the ones who actually helped me start to wrap my head around this. Even as a gay man, I had to come to terms with this. Sure. How old are your daughters? 17 and soon to be 21. And they both have had their own gender queer experiences finding themselves. Really? Like this. Miley Cyrus? Yeah. And what's beautiful about this is I don't say whether they're gay or straight at this point. I don't say whether they're pushing boundaries or they're not. They're just being them. They yeah. both have dated women. They both have dated men. And they're both experiencing life in their exploration just as they should. Yeah, that's good. I hope we never stop exploring that way. Well, I do too, because I think, again, this is where I'm going to put my own stamp of how I see things. I think the world would be such a different place if sexuality, sex, and gender didn't deter us from just loving each other. Oh, oh. God. I mean, that's the ultimate dream, isn't it? So when I want to talk a little bit about, yeah. you know, I want to talk about what you were going to say, but I also want to make sure we don't discount what you do with our youth of today. So, but you were going to say when you were younger. Our youth of today. I love the way you phrased that. When I was 11, I was in the car on the way home from church with mom. And all I could really comprehend, there was so much to say, but everything was getting bottled up in my throat physically. What I had to say was being restricted in my throat. I had so much tension going on. And all I could get to come out that day, we were on our way home from church, was, I think I like boys. Mm. And mom slammed on the brakes and she turned the wheel of the car and the car went off the road and into a ditch. Mm. And she started yelling, you don't know anything about that. You can't talk about things like that. You're only 11 years old. I learned that day to keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. I learned that day to hide who I am. I have made it my mission so, as best as I can so that no young people need to hide anymore. Mm -hmm. That if for no other reason they can take my vine on their iPhone to mom and dad, point to it and say, this is me, I'm like this. They can have a reference point because I didn't even have that when I was 11. If nothing else, that and if they can get just as a second step that you can be queer, you can be part of the LGBT community and you can be healthy. Yes. You can accept yourself. You can love yourself. You can have beautiful relationships. You can have a career. You can write a book. You can be a Vine star. You can <laughs> do a lot of you have a life ahead of you. Because I never got that message when I was And I'm glad person. you're sharing that message because sexuality, sexual orientation, our queer lives are only a piece of who we are. Mm. It's only a little sliver of everything. Now, this, I hope, will help kind of put it into perspective. You know, there's a scientific study that says that our DNA and our DNA were 99. Well, I'm going to just use the round numbers. 99% alike as human beings. Yes. Even though it's actually more than that. Yeah. What you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, they argue about whether it's 99 or 99.9%, .9%, but you know, it, round numbers, 99%. So that means there's this 1% that makes us unique. And in that uniqueness is all the stuff that we actually see in each other. 
that sometimes we embrace and sometimes we absolutely hate. Mm -hmm. But it's in that 1% Indeed. where you have your greatest opportunity to be everything you're meant to be in your unique self. To be a vine star, to be a singer, to be a nerdy rocket scientist, to be <laughs> a wallflower child. All of that is your beautiful 1% of what makes you unique. Well, then, my, it's my, just so yes. compelling to me yes. to learn to embrace that piece is so much greater. <laughs> it is so much greater than the other 99%. Yes. My top question that I get emailed to me for advice is how can I be confident like you are? Young people just see the self-love that I have, the self-acceptance that I have, and they want that. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that question, but it's a little misleading mm -hmm. when they phrase it that way. Because if you're not naturally confident, whatever that's supposed to mean, I wouldn't want you to try to be like me. I wouldn't want you to try to be confident. So the advice I always give is if you're shy, if you're introverted, your job on this earth is to love being shy, mm -hmm. to love your introversion, to love your thoughtfulness, your perspective. Yes. That's what you're here to do. You know, Don't try to be like me. Don't try to be like exactly. Lady Gaga to be you. Be you. Exactly. You yeah. Know, and this is the work that oh, I feel so blessed that I'm getting to do this work in, a, in another way now because it's all been around coming out, coming out of the closet, helping people come out. And as I've morphed, as we talked mm -hmm. about, we do, I wanted to grow because I kept feeling this pull that this is not just the queer, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender journey. This is yes. the human journey. Yes. And we've all heard that, you know, everybody's got closets, which kind of I stood on that for a while, too. But what I really started to come to is this uniqueness only comes from when we confidently embrace our quirks, our yep. uniqueness, our I don't really like to use the word differentness because I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and goes, OK, I want to be different today. No, I think we wake yes. up in the morning and go, I really want to be just me, my unique self. Yes. And well, this we is why I do this. Then confidence is there. I've linked the two together. When you yes. can embrace your uniqueness, you have confidence. Yes. In my book, I break them down into two different things, getting to know who you are and then getting to embrace, accept whatever mm -hmm. it is that you find, because both are so essential. If you close yourself off to being able to explore what might be so for you. You're in trouble and you never have a chance to get to step two, which is celebrating Absolutely. that. So we've been talking a lot about this book, but I don't think either one of us have actually mentioned the name of the book. So tell everyone the name of your book that's coming out. <laughs> My book, <clears throat> I, I'm so proud of this fact. I have to say it every time is with Penguin Random House, which is so awesome. And it is called How to Be You. Mm. And the presale will be starting very, very shortly awesome so the, make sure you look for that on amazon folks because you can actually take a book title and you can search and when the pre-sales start they'll be there mine's been on pre-sale for probably almost a month and a half now so oh how, yeah how to be you and you can you, go order it and then yes if they drop the price which they will you know then you get whatever <laughs> it is you know on the price the and, difference yeah. yeah exactly so you can just go to jeffreymarsh.com too. Yes. You can sign up for my email list and I'll let you awesome. know. Awesome. Love to do that. So Jeffrey, you know, well, first of all, this has been, I could talk. Can to I say what hours. the book is? Can of I course say you can. I was yeah. going to go there. I was going to say, I love you dearly, but what we didn't get to yet is, okay, let's talk about what the book is because <laughs> I don't want to get done with this and then go, okay, we talked about the book. We had his website, but they're like, well, why do I want that book? If I don't, I know it's just be, you know, just be you, but how do I do this? You know, to so talk about what the book exactly, is and how to do it. Exactly. Exactly. Be yourself. Might be some weird, meaningless phrase to people. It's like, it could be so hallmarky that we don't know what it is. So in the book, I break it down. My editor and I took the top questions that fans, young people mostly, but adults too, have emailed me. They all fell into certain categories, questions. Yep. And we took the top ones. We made nine chapters. And the book has sort of what I'm most proud of is that it's uncategorizable. 
it was very difficult for Penguin Random House to decide where to put it. Mm-hmm. It's part memoir. Yep. So how did I discover things about myself? And it is part straight up advice. So what I would say to someone who emailed me about specific subjects, and it is part workbook. Mm. So it is made on, it was one of the few books today. I don't know if you know this whole trend for adult coloring books. Yep. Yeah. It's a book like that made on stock, paper stock. People are going to draw in it. People are going to write things in it. They're going to tear out pages. They're going to do activities. They're going to, they are going to be part of creating the book. That's awesome. With me. That's so awesome. Oh. We created together as a community. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and and it, no, it, but it's so interesting that, I mean, uh, we're go- I'm going to do a little bit of true confession here before we wrap this up. Go. So I just kind of stumbled across you. We've had one conversation before we came on this podcast. Indeed, my pre-interview. Yes, and we I passed. Kinda, you did pass, and we just clicked. And <laughs> it's kind of interesting because the parallels of what we're doing are so ironic because my book is the same thing. Yes. It's part memoir. It's part straight up advice, as you say, and there's exercises in there for people to do about going yes. through their coming out journey. Yes. We're coming at the same thing from two different two angles, different angles, which I think is so beautiful because, you know, so people, people should read both of our books. Absolutely. They absolutely <laughs> do all should. the exercises. And, and you know what? It's so interesting because this is where collaboration and not saying, oh, my gosh, we're in competition and all this. This is where it plays so beautifully together, because I can see us actually doing something together where, you know, once mine's coming out before yours, yes. but once yours comes out, we could kind of do the Rick and Jeffrey show of, OK, so here's what you get when you do Rick's book. Here's what you get when you do Jeffrey's book. And we do some collaboration to sell them together. And, you know, there's lots of yes. different things people you can do when you yes. just allow yourself to be free to the possibility. First of all, I'm so glad we've had this chance to just do this because it's been fun. So. It's been informative and I would do it all over again. I hope I didn't overstay my welcome. Never, never. Nobody overstays their welcome in the coming out lounge. If they do, the bouncer will come in and throw them out, but that's only if they've had too much to drink here. So, <laughs> but okay. in all seriousness, you know, this is the coming out lounge and I always invite every guest that comes on to share that thing that they would like to leave the listeners with that would really help someone who's in the midst of, oh my gosh, what am I doing? How do I do this? So if you could give that like golden Oprah moment nugget of wisdom, but we're going to call it the Jeffrey moment of wisdom in all his fabulousness or their fabulousness, what would it be? I can predict the future and you're going to be okay. Not just okay. You're going to thrive. How is that, Rick? Fabulous. <laughs> With several A's. Fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. I love it because you will be okay. Now, I'm going to throw something into what Jeffrey just said. Yes, that go. That kind of helps it along. But you got to believe that too. If you don't believe that you're going to be okay, the universe is going to keep teaching you that lesson <laughs> <laughs> until you get it. So take it from the big daddy bear and the fabulous, fabulous Jeffrey. You are going to be okay and you're going to thrive. I think we kind of covered a lot of territory there, didn't we? <laughs> yes. Have you stopped recording? No, I no, not stop. yet. No, I'm not. No, I don't do the stop the recording until I do the wrap up stuff. So oh, I was going to say incriminating things and I'll, I'll pause it. I'll stop. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll wait for the incriminating things, but I'm not going to yeah. tell you when I actually turn the recorder off. So, okay. But anyway, if you guys have all enjoyed, and I know I've enjoyed this conversation. In fact, I think it's going to go down as one of my favorites thus far. If you've enjoyed it, give us some love. We're not going to beg on bended knee, but we would love some love over on iTunes and Stitcher, wherever you're listening to us. Do a comment, do a rating. Anything, anything. And if you want to catch up with me on Facebook, you can at The Coming Out Coach. And if you want to tweet at both of us, my handle is at Rick Clemens. And Jeffrey, your handle is? At the Jeffrey Marsh. Yes. And folks, the is important. <laughs> Trust those of us who do this stuff. When somebody <laughs> snakes our handle out from us before we got to it, we have to Indeed. put those funky little words in front of like the Jeffrey Marsh. So, Indeed. and hashtag for the show is the coming out lounge, or it can be coming out lounge, either one. 
And I think with that, we've talked about our books coming out. We've talked about being fabulous and being queer. So I think we're going to say with that, like we always do, we're going to wrap it up and say, go out there. Never stop stepping out, stepping up and stepping into living your powerful truth. I'm Rick Clemens, the Coming Out Coach. You've been listening to the Coming Out Lounge, and I'll catch you next week. Take care, everyone. You've just experienced the Coming Out Lounge. Go online to www.comingoutlounge.com to learn more. And tune in again next week for more stories and tips for being true to yourself.